Hello everyone, welcome back to another spray paint tutorial. Today the paint we're going to be making is a mountain slash nature scene. I've been requested to do this quite a bit, so here we go. The materials you're going to need are poster board, spray paint, magazine sheets, palette knives, a sock or a sponge, and a straight edge. So let's get right into it. And as you can see right off the bat, I changed the camera angle so you guys can see my hands a little bit better for when I'm making this painting. Tell me if you like this camera angle better so I know where to position my camera from now on. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, lay down a layer of yellow. This is gonna be our base coat for the mountains. And then we're gonna add a layer of orange over the top of that. And yes, I'm aware that there's a glare on the page. Do not tell me, I know I edited this and I am recording the commentary for it. <laughs> okay, next you're gonna take a can of red. Wow, my chair just squeaked really loud. Uh, take a can of red and just cover up uh, the top of it. You don't need to cover up the entire thing. Just like when you look outside, the entire sky is not red, the entire sky is not orange. I probably could have left some yellow in the sky, but guess what? I didn't, so uh, so deal with it. <laughs> Next, take a magazine sheet, fold it in half. Not once, not twice, but three times. This will give you a nice sturdy edge to start creating your mountains with. Keep the point pointed up and just start curving and carving down the sides of your mountains, you know, to just build up the sides and make it look like a mountain. Just think about how a mountain looks, just curve down lines and things like that. Add some clear coat if you need to, my paint was starting to dry, and you want the yellow to stand out quite a bit so you can actually see the mountains. And once again, just go back to carving and building it. You can add multiple peaks to this, as you'll see me do in a minute and you just kind of block in the area. See, just different peaks, different little spots, and then fill in the area at the bottom of that. You're probably thinking right now, Seth, you changed the camera angle because, you know, you want people to be able to see what your hands were doing, but you didn't do that for this. Well, guess what? I did change the camera angle. <laughs> this is one of the ones I practice on. I practiced mountains three or four times before I actually had a finished product that I felt like I could make a tutorial out of. So that should give you an idea that things take time and practice. But as you can see, I'm just taking the point and just basically drawing and carving down basic mountain shapes. Really nothing too difficult. Who would have thought that building mountains was easy? <laughs> as you can see, just multiple peaks and then you just kind of block in the rest of the area. Okay, back to the other painting. Spray some clear coat on, and I'm just using the edge of the palette knife blade. And when adding highlights, pick a side that you want the light to show up more on. I chose the left side of my mountains, so I'm not really going to be highlighting right-sided slopes of any of my mountains. I'm always going to highlight on that side, because that gives you the idea that light is hitting it from that side, that there's a light source on that side. Is my idea crossed yet? Good. <laughs> But uh, as you can see, I'm not just going straight down with my highlights either. I'm not going from like the tip all the way down to the base of the mountain, just straight down with highlights. I'm making jagged edges. I'm leaving some spots open. This will keep the mountains more interesting. It'll show that there's multiple peaks, multiple spots, a lot of things going on in your mountains, and it makes it more interesting as a, you know, as a whole. That sounded dirty. My apologies. And of course do with the last mountain, but since it's clear over there and you got two other bigger mountains in front of it, you don't need to highlight as much on it. Just little highlights here and there. It's your world. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to do any more Bob Ross quotes. I'll stop. Okay, and after you're done highlighting your mountains, take a can of white and very lightly and very quickly spray white on the base of the mountain and mist it upward more. You don't want to cover up all the mountains, you just want to make them look like they're pushed more of the back. Next we're going to build our middle ground, and it's just like building basic rock textures. You just peel away the paint, and then we're going to add some more white to break that up more. The middle ground is basically to break up the background from the foreground to make it so it's not just like oh there's mountains and then all of a sudden you're really close up there's something in between those idea depth all over again <laughs> and after you add the white to the middle ground we're going to add some black and this is where where we are going to start building our foreground if i could talk correctly <laughs> 
take your sock, fold it in half twice, or your sponge, and don't fold it at all, and just uh, start building like your uh, grass and bush shadow colors. So as you can see, I just sprayed the black on the poster board and I didn't add any other colors to the sock. I just started dabbing away. Next, we're going to spray some black, doesn't matter where, and then uh, dip your sock into it. And we're gonna start building some trees on the side. I sped this up a little bit because I think you got the basic idea of how to build trees and things and leaves in general. But uh, for those of you who don't know, just make it kind of kind of like how you're doing the highlights don't make it just straight down some leaves stick out more than others some are sucked in more just kind of build more natural shapes by being random nature's not really uniform you know uniform it's very random and you know woo <laughs> i don't know how else to explain it you get the idea by looking at it, though next we're going to add some uh, clear coat because we're going to start adding in some finer details as you can see i'm holding the palette knife towards the end and the first thing we're gonna do is start building rocks. Basically, uh, there's no really set way to do rocks. This is the way I do it from watching other people. You just kind of make curved lines. They kind of look, it's, it, imagine like when you're younger and you were drawing and you built birds. Well, not built birds, oh my God, wow. Uh, when you made birds, you just kind of like drew like the two curved lines that met in the middle. That's basically what you're doing with rocks you're just making curved lines over and over again. Because since the rocks are set more into the landscape, the bottom of them is going to be rather shadowed and the tops of them are going to be fairly well highlighted. So hopefully that explains, hopefully my bird analogy is good <laughs> for the rocks. Next, uh, this requires almost no pressure. As you can see, I'm holding it by the palette knife by the handle and I'm just doing quick flicks upward. Uh, this is to create twigs and grass and things like that. You're just taking the tip of the palette knife and just quickly flicking upward. Almost no pressure is added to this. It's just simple scraping away of paint to create sticks and twigs and grass. It is as easy as that. Next, we're going to add some clear coat, and I'm going to show you a better way of creating a tree since my hands are no longer in the way. Hooray! So as you can see, I built like one main branch and then I just build off of that. I always start from the bottom and build back up using less and less of the paddle knife edge. Hopefully you all can see that now. <sighs> so once again, start at the bottom, just build up and use less and less of the paddle knife edge. And like I said, with all this stuff, this all takes time. I, I mean, I did three or four mountain paintings before I was like, okay, this is the one I'm going to use. And I've been doing this for almost six years. So it all takes time. Be patient with it. Do not expect to get this on your first time. And I'm aware I'm not really explaining the tree. I think you can basically get the idea that there's really not a whole lot to explain with it uh, from what I've already explained in my other tutorials and from what you can just see me doing. Just Take your time building the branches and building up using less and less of the palette knife edge. You'll get them eventually. I swear to you. <laughs> Next, take a magazine sheet or spray your paint wherever. Add some green and some yellow to brighten it up since this, is a, since this is, if I could talk, a sunny day. Take a new piece of dirty sock. Fold it in half twice to have that curved shape again. And we're going to make like a light green color, so make sure to get both colors mixed in together. And this is going to be our middle tone. So we have our shadow color, then we have our middle tone. As you can see, I'm not really being careful, but I'm not just like roaring in there being like, I'm going to put this green wherever I want. Yeah! <laughs> I'm being careful not to cover up all the black, because when you look in a forest or anywhere, there are shadows, there are dark spots, because light is hitting the leaves and stuff at certain angles. So if there's light there's going to be shadows. So just leave some dark spots, but you don't need to leave too much. There, there's a right and a wrong amount. <laughs> if that makes any sense whatsoever, I'm aware I'm a guru at explaining things. And it's the same thing with leaves up above, like for your branches or your trees or leaves or whatever the hell you want to call them, sticking out to the sides. Like I said, this is just a middle tone. We'll add the highlight in a few seconds. 
basically to add a highlight, my computer screwed up again, hooray. Um, I'm basically just taking yellow by itself and found a new piece of sock and I'm just adding a little bit of yellow on top of everything. This will just give like that little glow like, oh, there's a lot of light hitting it there. And you wanna use this uh, more subtly than just like the green mill tone. You're just adding wherever you think light would be hitting the most on your leaves and stuff. Next, you wanna take your straight edge, block off the unused part of the poster board from the rest of the painting, add blue and white. You can add whatever colors you want. I'm just keeping it very basic. And uh, just, you know, blend the paint together. You don't want to over blend it. You don't want just like a light blue rectangle on the edge of the paint. At the bottom of the painting, you just want to have streaks of blue and streaks of white to make it actually look like flowing water. Honestly, that's about it. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced painting, but uh, practice, practice, practice. That's all I can say. And uh, there's our French product. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I uh, enjoyed learn, uh, reteaching myself how to make mountains. I will have more tutorials up in the future. If you guys could leave a like, a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, it's a big help. It supports me and uh, lets me know that you guys are learning. So I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all later.